Hi guys, in this video I'll give you my detailed review of the LG G6. But first, let me tell you about the awesome deal I got for this phone on Amazon during the Great Indian Festival sale in late September. Before the sale, this phone was selling for about 39,000 rupees. But during the sale, the price dropped to Rs. 33,990. It also had a great exchange offer. So Amazon was giving 2,000 rupees extra on exchanging an old phone over and above the old phone's exchange value. I had an 18-month-old Redmi Note 3 with an exchange value of Rs. 3,300. So I got the total exchange value of Rs. 5,300, nearly 50% of its original price after 18 months of use, which is just incredible. So the net cost of LG G6 after exchange was just Rs. 28,690. That's not all. I also got 1500 rupees cash back on using HDFC credit card, plus no cost EMI, plus the option to pay the EMI from Jan 2018 without any extra charge. So the final cash outflow for me was just Rs. 27,190. Considering the MRP of this phone, which is Rs. 55,000, I got it for less than 50% of its price. Now that is an awesome deal. Getting to the review, let me just summarize my overall experience with this phone in one line, that this phone is the true flagship killer of 2017. Even without sale and exchange offers, right now it sells for about 36,000 rupees, which is about the same price as the OnePlus 5. I am a big OnePlus fan and a proud owner of the OnePlus 3T. But I feel that the OnePlus 5 is just a small step up compared to the 3T and the LG G6 is a much better overall package compared to the OnePlus 5. So let me tell you why the LG G6 is a much better overall package. On paper, this phone literally has all the features you can ask from a flagship grade phone. Beautiful design and excellent build quality, excellent QHD display with HDR, dual cameras, powerful processor, ample of RAM and internal storage, plus the ability to expand it, a decent sized battery with quick charging, waterproofing and built-in hi-fi quad DAC for awesome audio quality. Still, this phone didn't really create a big splash in the market, mainly because of two reasons. First is this phone, the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus, the superstars among smartphones and secondly the price. This phone launched at a price of Rs. 52,000 which is way too much. Had they been more aggressive with the pricing and marketing, this phone would have been a huge success. Nevertheless, it is priced really well right now and due to the festive season, you can get some really good offers on this phone. So let me show you how good this phone really is and why I highly recommend this phone over any other phone in the price range of 30 to 40,000 rupees. First, let's talk about the design and build quality. This year is the year of bezel-less phones and this is one of the first phones to start this revolution. It feels like a small phone, but provides a massive 5.7 inch display thanks to its nearly 80% screen to body ratio. Next to this, any standard phone feels quite outdated in terms of design. The glass and metal construction gives it a very premium feel. The back is Gorilla Glass 5 which is more resistant to cracks, while the front is Gorilla Glass 3 which is more resistant to scratches. This phone is IP68 certified so it can survive in fresh water up to 5 feet deep for 30 minutes. So overall in terms of design and build quality, this phone is definitely a flagship grade phone. Display is one of the most important aspects of any phone and here LG doesn't disappoint. This phone has a huge 5.7 inch display with a resolution of 2880 by 1440. That's 564 pixels per inch, making it great for virtual reality. Moreover, this is an HDR display and supports both HDR10 as well as Dolby Vision standards. Compared to other LCDs, the colors and contrast of this phone are much superior. However, compared to phones like the Galaxy S8 and the Note 8, which have an AMOLED screen, this phone falls short both in terms of overall brightness and contrast. 
Still, it is one of the best LCD screens around and it will definitely please even the most demanding users. Both LG and Samsung used to have extremely ugly looking and cartoonish Android skins, but both have come a long way both in terms of aesthetics as well as polish. I personally prefer the Samsung's UI, but LG has also done a great job. It is extremely feature packed, you get always on display, double tap to wake, one hand mode by simply swiping across the navigation bar. Customizable navigation bar where you can change the order or even add or remove extra features. Then there is LG Q Slide, which is a collection of floating apps. There is also a very useful game battery saver where you can reduce the resolution and frame rate of the games to save battery and improve performance. You can quickly access the camera by double pressing the volume down key. Then there is smart settings which automate certain tasks based on your location like turning off Wi-Fi and turning on Bluetooth while in car. You also get themes as well as the ability to change fonts. So overall it is quite a feature packed user interface. In terms of performance it doesn't have the latest and greatest from Qualcomm, however it is rocking 2016's flagship SoC, the Snapdragon 821 which is an extremely capable chip. Along with 4GB of RAM it has more than enough power under the hood to handle even the most demanding tasks. This phone packs a respectable 3300 mAh battery inside. In my usage, I am able to get through a full day of medium to heavy use on a single charge comfortably. The standby time is especially impressive even with the always on display. And when I need to quickly top up the battery, it doesn't disappoint as it supports quick charge 3.0 and comes with a quick charger in the box. Audio on this phone requires a special mention as it is phenomenal. This phone has an inbuilt 32-bit Hi-Fi Quad DAC. So if you are an audiophile with a collection of premium headphones, this is the phone to get. It can easily drive those headphones which require high impedance. The difference is night and day compared to most of the phones which don't have an inbuilt DAC. Here is an example. This phone not only has a 3.5mm jack, which is by the way becoming quite rare day by day, but has also made it one of the highlights of this phone with its excellent audio output. The final and the most impressive aspect of this phone is its camera. This phone has a dual camera setup, but unlike other manufacturers which provide a telephoto lens, or monochrome sensor in the second camera, 
this phone has a super wide angle lens with a 125 degree field of view as the second camera which opens so many new possibilities for photography. Both the rear cameras can capture 13 megapixel stills and 4K video up to 30 frames per second. The primary camera has an aperture of f1.8, phase detect autofocus as well as optical image stabilization. The second camera has an aperture of f2.4 with fixed focus and no OIS. The picture quality from both the cameras is pretty good in most lighting conditions. However, phones like Galaxy S8, iPhones and Pixel phones provide better image quality and dynamic range even in extremely low light conditions. Here are a few samples and comparison shots with OnePlus 3D and the Galaxy S8 Plus. The camera software requires a special mention as it is loaded with features. You get full manual mode both for photos as well as videos with control over focus, shutter speed, ISO and white balance. In manual video mode, you also get live monitoring and control of audio recorded. Overall, this camera setup is definitely going to please the creative photographer inside you. Conclusion time. This phone doesn't really stand out as a winner in any particular category, but it comes really close in almost all categories. Great design and build quality, excellent screen, feature-packed software and good battery life. Amazing audio experience and very capable and unique cameras make this an excellent overall package with no real weaknesses or missing features. Even from value perspective, this phone delivers about 90% of the experience of the Galaxy S8 but for just 50-60% to of its price. For all these reasons, I feel this phone is the real flagship killer of 2017 and it deserves to be on your list if you are looking for a phone under 40,000 rupees. That's it for the video, hope you enjoyed it. Do share your opinion about this phone in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.